This is Jeff Berger of Creative Technologies. Jeff puts together multimedia presentations for corporate clients for things like trade shows and sales meetings. And to do that, Jeff uses a computer he says offers the best combination of price and performance, the Amiga 3000. Now, for Amiga fans, the rest of the world just doesn't seem to understand the beauty and power they find in this multimedia marvel from Commodore. Well, we'll try to help you understand today as we take a look at the latest hardware and software for the Amiga on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you it's a federal offense to copy software. The SBA provides information on how to stay software legal. Funding is also provided by PC Connection and Mac Connection, and by Byte Magazine and Bix. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Shafe, and with me this week is Tim Bahar, an executive vice president with Creative Strategies. Thank you. Tim, what we're looking at here on this VCR is a video. In this video, if we look carefully, we'll see uh, use of a video switcher, obviously, right. a still store, a character generator, paint box, a frame buffer, digital video effects, and so on. Yet this was not done in a professional, professional studio facility. It was done on an Amiga personal computer using the video toaster mm -hmm. board. Uh, pretty impressive stuff. Yeah. Despite this, the Amiga is kind of a mystery to me. You know, if you go to Europe or certainly if you go to Germany, the Amiga is a mainstream business computer. Here in the States, it's still a kind of narrow niche machine. What is the difference? Well, Commodore suffered from the image of being a entertainment computer from the early days, yeah. and then also from what we call the chicken and egg syndrome. In order for them to attract software developers, they needed to have many machines on the market. But in order to have many machines on the market, you had to get distribution. Right. And because of all the competition and other things that were going on with other operating systems, they've really had some struggles. But they're starting to make a fairly strong comeback because of multimedia computing and things like this. Uh -huh. Well, Tim, today we'll look at the newest version of the Amiga, the Model 3000, and we'll see the newest software for the Amiga, including a brand new animation program from the Walt Disney Company, the new Amiga authoring system called Amiga Vision, and the newest version of the Video Toaster. Now, since the Amiga has not garnered a lot of dealer support or third-party developer support, Amiga users have had to figure things out the old-fashioned way with users groups. We're going to begin with a visit to the original Amiga users group in Palo Alto, California. The first Amiga users group began life in 1985 with a handful of people meeting informally at a neighborhood church in Belmont, California. Since then, Boggs meetings have become bigger and noisier, sometimes attracting over 1,000 people. Because of its increasing size, the monthly meeting is now held in the formal surroundings of a hotel conference room. It draws a mixture of Amiga aficionados, ranging from computer hackers to Commodore 64 converts. Like most other users group, this one picks up where dealer support leaves off. This sort of a club is intended to provide to the users uh, basic information uh, in developments in new computer technology uh, that might apply to Amiga, new concepts and information about current product offerings, developments of previous product offerings, as well as uh, an ability to solve problems that they might encounter in their computing. The evening meeting consists of a question and answer session and, on occasion, a field report on an Amiga user. But unlike some support groups, FOG is also a forum where people and companies can come to show off their newest programs for the Amiga. This user group was different because of the size of it. Uh, a lot of uh, software company sort of uh, heard about us, and they were willing to pay to come across the country to demo the product firsthand. So we got to see most software that nobody else has seen firsthand. A lot of softwares were actually premiered at this meeting. So that made it very popular. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Susan Chase. The newest version of the Amiga is the Model 3000, and here to show it off is Headley Davis, Amiga Product Development Manager with Commodore, and also with us, Sam Palinuk. Hi. Sam is a producer with the software division of the Disney Company. Tim? There's been various models of Commodore Amigas over the last few years. What's different between the 3000 and, let's say, the last version, which was the 2500? Well, the 2500 was a 68030-based machine. 
which was in, built up from several different cards in our base 2000 machine. And what we've done with the 3000 is we've taken the, the general expansion cards that most people use and embedded them directly on the motherboard of the 3000. So for example, uh, we have a hard disk controller built right onto the motherboard, 32 bits wide. We've got up to 16 megabytes of fast memory and two megabytes of chip memory directly on the motherboard. And we've got a display enhancer giving you better video output directly on the motherboard. All these things combined together, being the key peripherals that people used on 2500s, are integrated directly in the machine, and that allows us to bring the machine in at a lower cost for the consumer. You've also got a new operating system, is that right? Yes, we do. This is a, a Amiga DOS 2.0. This is our new release of the operating system. It's very important for people because it's a much more professional environment to use. Uh, some of the features of Amiga DOS are, as in many different machines, is we have preferences so that you can adjust the display to your, your own personal taste. For example, you can change the colors to, to whatever you feel is appropriate. There's also abilities to modify fonts. On this particular machine, we're running it uh, in a VGA mode, and you can see that the fonts are very small here and they're difficult to read. So what I can do is I can pick much larger fonts and use those, and hence we have uh, fonts, mm -hmm. what we call fonts for the blind, or it's mm -hmm. much easier for the people at home to see. In addition to this, uh, we bundled the machine with a software package called Amiga DOS 2.0, uh, excuse me, Amiga Vision. Yeah. And Amiga Vision presents a method of gluing output from various sorts of programs together so that people can do presentations. And th this very small thing just demonstrates uh, three screens that are put together using a package called TV Text, and they're shown one at a time. And it's a very simple demonstration. Lou Wallace is going to be showing us something much more advanced later on in the program. All right, Sam, I want to turn to you, mm -hmm. and we all know the Amiga uh, as an animation machine, mm -hmm. as a creative machine, multimedia, mm -hmm. and so on, uh, and while Hedley sort of reboots here so that you can get up. Uh, this is now, I understand, the first animation program out of the Disney people. Yes, who, it of is. Of course, the animation people. Yes. And, and what was the theory in, in bringing this out on the Amiga platform first? Um, we brought out an Amiga because the Amiga uh, has graphics capabilities that are very well suited to this particular type of display. All right, show it to us. Let's, let's see how this works. Uh, I'm very happy to. Let's boot up here. Here is the animation studio. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just create a very quick animation for our eyes here. Okay. This is in real time. No magic. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm and you're not an artist, right? Uh, yes. Uh, anyone who knows what they're doing will know that this is, <laughs> you're not, not, an artist. Artist. This okay. is not an artistic endeavor. But you can see that uh, the animation studio allows me to see back through the paper, right. the simulation of paper. So we're seeing several cells at once, basically. Is that right. It? And it allows me to get very accurate control over what's happening. And I can see what's going on in the background, which allows me an incredible amount of control. And you can see here in just, in just seconds, I've been able to create an animation uh -huh. before your Very eyes. Nice. In addition to having a, an easy to use animation package, we also wanted to um, not just drop the user off there. We wanted to uh, help them out by providing a variety of animations that uh, they can actually learn from. Animated clip art, in essence. Yes. These are uh -huh, the absolutely. fundamental lessons mm -hmm. that uh, animators are actually uh, taught. And you can see well, that actually, I can see through yeah, this yeah. and study it. Um, we provide several of these that cover all of the basics uh, of animation. In addition, we've included uh, f animations from the morgue, uh, films and shorts. And this is what a Disney animator was able to do with that very same notion, using quite a bit of exaggeration and uh, just basic Disney magic. Mm -hmm. Could we see something in color? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the program also fully supports color, and what I'll do is I'll take one of the included animations and color it in for you very quickly. Here's a bird uh, demonstrating the basic notion of flight, and what I'll do... And we're coloring each cell motion in this case. Yes, I am. And there are only six cells. So, this so you're manually coloring each cell. And, and yes. Y and you haven't automated this process in here. No. Still, it goes pretty quick. Yeah, it goes pretty fast. And what I'll do is I'll color in his body. I assume this quickly. is mainly to give them greater control? Um, the reason that you uh, color this way is because it's an emulation of the way it's done traditionally. Uh -huh. And as you can see, it's actually very fast. Wow. 
That's great. In addition to um, these animations, we've also included a uh, completed animation. We set loose one of our Disney animators, uh, animators and said, what, uh, what would you do with this package? And that's this animation here. It's included with the package. And this was created using this, this software? It was, it was painted and uh, superimposed on the backgrounds with the package. Wow. And uh, we're very proud of it. Here you can see Donald is using a computer. <laughs> and he's loading his animation. It's taking a little longer than he's expecting. And to his surprise, Mickey comes up instead of Donald. And he loses his temper, <laughs> and he strikes a key. It's just like work. That's great. great. <laughs> Only from Disney. And, and Tim, as you were saying before, this is really the advantage this machine has in doing this particular kind Absolutely. of work. Absolutely. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, while the Commodore Amiga has never gained the market acceptance of maybe an IBM or an Apple, it can gloat just a little bit for over at Hewlett Packard, where they make some pretty good computers, too. When they wanted a computer to do animation, they bought an Amiga. Here's a report. D was the correct answer. Everybody Engineers at Hewlett Packard used the HP corporate television network now to feed technical training and product updates to HP staff around the country. To illustrate some of the abstract technical concepts and the inner workings of the HP products, the engineers use colorful 2D animations created on an Amiga 2500. The video producers at HP's Information Technology Education Network say they had some very specific requirements in mind when they bought their Amiga computer two years ago. One of the things was the fact that I could import artwork, clip artwork that we have in our own HP drawing packages and easily move it into whatever system we're using. Secondly, it had to support NTSC video, had to support overscan, had to be easy to use, had to be something where I could just pull software right off the shelf, put it into the system, just go down to any local store and get it. So I, as looking around, I found the Amiga, it looked like a good fit, found the software I needed that could easily move images around, and that's how we chose it. After Using pen files, and paper, uh, uh, the, the producer initially creates a storyboard with the engineer. Then, with deluxe productions from Electronic Arts, he puts together an animation sequence on the Amiga Graphics workstation. Any changes the engineer wants to make to the drawing can then be made by simply modifying the objects around with a mouse. Vernon says that using the Amiga for animation has improved the training learning curve at HP. The end result for the instructors has been that they can more easily explain their concepts that they couldn't very well explain before. For the students, it's an attention-getting device, really. It's something where all of a sudden they're used to seeing static graphics, and then to see this thing come to life on the screen, again, where the instructor can point, annotate, and even walk into the graphic using a blue screen, is pretty exciting. It gets them involved. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. The Macintosh has HyperCard, the Windows PC Toolbook, and the Amiga 3000 now comes bundled with Amiga Vision. Here to show us the new Amiga authoring system is Lou Wallace, Senior Editor for Technology with Amiga World Magazine, and joining us again, Headley Davis of Commodore. Tim? When I think of authoring systems, I usually think of really complicated programs, but I understand this is really easy to use and more iconic. Tell us a little bit more about how you view authoring systems. Well, uh as far as uh, Amiga Vision, as far as an authoring system, is really an icon based, object oriented graphic programming language. Uh, it can be used for presentations or for full featured programming uh, tasks. The, the basic command structure is set here in this main menu where you have a variety of different things control icons, interrupt programming, database, and it has a DBase 3 compatible database, uh, various user interactive commands, and a probably the heart and soul is the audiovisual commands. These are uh, actually, these little pictures, icons, or commands, just like you would have in basic or C. For example, if I wanted to create a, a screen command to load right. a screen, I'd just pick it up and drag it into place. If I wanted to add some user interactivity, I would just take the mouse icon and grab it and put it in place. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps if I wanted to add uh, a little control structure here, I would add a go-to, which a lot of programmers don't like, and double click on here and tell it when it gets, reaches this point to come back here and go to this icon. And you can see now that it points back. Now I've actually just created a whole program while we were talking. I didn't really define what, it, what I wanted to do. Yeah. So if I was to double click on the screen icon, I bring up a requester, which is where I put in all the parameters for the commands. Uh, clicking on the directory command, the button here, I can load up a predefined screen, such as uh, one of my favorites, the Stooges. And here I've got a picture of the three Stooges that's been digitized from an old movie. 
Now, if I, I could just present this and show the image, but to make it interactive by clicking on the mouse command, I can go into an object editor, which allows me to create interactive hotspots on the screen. And here I've loaded the, the image to preview, and I'm gonna add some user interactive hotspots here. We'll start with Curly, and I'm just gonna outline him very quickly and I've created a hotspot here that I can then further define with right. sound effects. So if effects. you punch on Curly, something will happen. Something will something, happen. Yeah. I can have feedback sounds mm -hmm. or, or colors or whatever I need to do. And I guess, Headley, the interesting thing here is the AV part of it, right, where you're able to bring into this program all kinds of AV sources. Yeah, one of the important things about the machine is your ability to take video and overlay it on top of your computer output. So we can take computer graphics, video from video disk, audio samples, and combine them all together into a cohesive thing. Or even animation. And animation, computer-generated digital mm -hmm. animation. All right, Lou, you've got an example of that, I think, next. Yeah, I do. This is something I did uh, in about 30 minutes. I used a ray tracing animation package, and I generated a animated ray trace skeleton, the human nice. skeleton. Uh, I have text windows here for information, and I hotspots on the screen where I can just click on, on the something and something will happen. In this case, I zoomed in on the, mm -hmm. on the ray trace skeleton. So what about video? Okay, well, let's get out of this one. And I have previously loaded here what I call the Encyclopedia of Insects. And this is based upon a, a commercially available laser disc from Pioneer from the Encyclopedia of Animal series. And I, what I did was I created animation and screens to and a control program to interact with it. So you can see that he's got digital graphics up here, and at the right. same time he's going to be able to have okay. video coming from the video disc. Uh, the metaphor I used here was that of a, a book, an okay. encyclopedia. If I, there was something I was interested in here, I could simply click on it and we'd get a full motion video sequence. If it w wasn't something I liked on this page, I'd just click the next page gadget and we actually get an animated page uh -huh. turn. Okay, so pull up some video for us. I'd right, say they were interested in leafcutter bees, uh -huh. for example. Uh, I can click on that and we sh well, the laser disc will be activated and we will combine computer graphics down here with full motion video uh -huh. and sound. Uh -huh. The leaf cutter bee this is, is control, uh, completely controllable by the user. For example, if there was a frame here that I was particularly interested in to study, I could just click on it on the frame and, and pause wherever I liked. And then if I was, didn't really like that, I'd hit the done button and go right. back to the menu. And again, you were able to create that all yourself, you say, in a couple days under couple, AmigaVision. Actually, a couple evenings, yeah. Really? Using AmigaVision and, and various Amiga graphic programs because everything's fully integrated So what together. you're really doing is you're going out and getting multiple sources. In this case, you're getting video. In the earlier case, you were getting art and, and animation. Right. And then you're using this iconic authoring system to tie it all together. That's right. It's all done with, with graphic commands. Uh, that's what makes AmigaVision a little easier yeah. and less intimidating to the average user as opposed to more traditional computer All right, languages. Lou Headley, thank you very much. In just a minute, a look at one of the hottest Amiga add-ons, the Video Toaster, so stay with us. Well, we know the Amiga is good for music and animation, but it is also now the ultimate video machine, thanks in part to the Video Toaster. And here to show it off are Tim Jennison and Paul Montgomery of New Tech. Tim? Now, let me see if I get this straight. In the past, to do a bunch of video controls, I've had to have machines that were $500,000, $100,000. Now I'm going to be able to do this with this card for $1,500? Absolutely. Thanks for having us here. We showed the toaster recently at the National Association of Broadcasters show. And this is where the engineers go to buy their stuff. And they came by the booth and they said things like, this is unbelievable, this is revolutionary, that you can do this in a box for this price. And this is what they were excited about. This is the video toaster card. And when you plug this into your Amiga 2000 or 2500 and put these discs on your hard drive, you have the equivalent of a television hmm. studio. All right, Tim, we want to take a look at some of the things you can do with the toaster. F first of all, tell us what the physical setup is here. What do you have? Okay, I've got my own cameras here on, on corners of your table. Okay, so we've got your two little cameras here. Right. right, and the toaster's installed in this Amiga 2000. And the cameras are sort of inputs into your toaster mm -hmm. control room, can, if you will. I can take up to four cameras or VCRs. Okay. Um, so first of all, the first thing you can do with four inputs is you can use the video switcher. So I've got one camera here on the screen. I can now do transitions from one camera to another, like this wipe. Here's some other wipes. Okay, Here's so a wipe with a border. And moves. the uh, basic dissolve, which mm -hmm. any good $20,000 switcher can do, I guess. Mm -hmm. But where it gets interesting is the uh, digital video effects. Now this is the part that you've never had in a home uh, studio before, low-end right. uh, production. That's for sure. The digital video effects are the most expensive. They can sell for, for equipment up to twenty to 50000 just mm -hmm. for that. And that's uh, a lot of fun. 
Okay, here's an effect that I like a lot. If I could ask you to sort of uh, get out of this shot okay. for a second. Get out of your camera's way. Okay. That'll do. Okay, go ahead and sit back up again. Okay. And I'm going to beam you into your chair Star Trek style. Energizing. Oh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> That's great. Okay, the next uh, major element of the toaster is the, uh, the paint box, uh, or the paint video paint system. And with that, you can, you can uh, create your own graphics. Mm -hmm. and what makes this different than, say, uh, a computer paint program is the signals that come out of this are broadcast ready. You can put it right on the air. It has 16.8 million colors, and you can do a lot of uh, interesting things. Tim's mm -hmm. loading up a mm -hmm. picture here. Yeah, here's a frame that I created in probably 20, 20 minutes or so. You can freeze live video and bring it into your uh, mm -hmm. paint box graphics. Okay, another uh, major piece of this is the character generator. And a character generator is sort of an electronic typewriter. And you can put uh, uh, anything uh, written on the screen, such as mm -hmm. uh, rolling, mm -hmm. rolling credits. Right. Uh, I can roll sideways, too. And uh, what sets this apart from, from sort of a, a character generator you'd find in your camcorder is that we have uh, really much higher quality. Again, 16 million colors and, and 35 uh -huh. nanosecond resolution, yeah, which is yeah, the same thing right. you'd see on a, on a network program. Mm -hmm. And here's a screen that takes advantage of those features. <laughs> so. Okay, what the uh, people at uh, NAB were most excited about was the 3D graphics system, which I'm entering right now. And with that, you can create uh, a computer rendered animation. Let me load a scene here. I've taken your uh, Computer Chronicles logo mm -hmm. and uh, entered it into the, the 3D database here. And with this system, I can set up the uh, start and end points of the animation. Mm -hmm. And um, then once I've got the camera angles and lighting and color all set up, then I render out to videotape. And we have a tape okay, we actually, Yeah, if we could roll that piece of video and see what the end product was here. I can tell you that stuff usually costs about fifteen hundred dollars a second. Yes. Right. That kind of stuff. And I understand you did that in about a half an hour mm -hmm. to set up the thing. To render it, it took a few hours to do. Now, now, uh, Paul, it does seem like magic. I mean, Tim was mentioning before. How do you do this? I mean, you've got every expensive machine you'd have in a TV studio coming off that one board. I mean, what's what's the trick? Part of the magic is the Amiga. The Amiga of all the computers in the market is the only one set up with video timing. So you can uh, easily add uh, the circuitry we needed to do it. In the toaster, we have four custom chips, and those custom chips give the horsepower to do everything. Plus, uh, we have a 350,000 lines of code, mostly assembly language, mm -hmm. running in the Amiga, and that's how it works. And, and who do you see as the user now? Is this really designed for the broadcast professional? Is this going to be high-end home video? Where do you see it going? Well, video is everywhere. It's sort of the new literacy. Yeah. And uh, people are using it in homes, schools, businesses. Uh, but the problem is that it, video you make with your camcorder looks amateurish and uh, is boring, actually. Right. Uh, so the video toaster is designed for anybody that wants to bring a, a network quality look to their mm -hmm. videos. And it is available as a product? It's shipping to Mega dealers now and uh, has been uh, for a while. And the price is? Uh, $15.95. Okay, thanks very much, Tim and Paul. That's our look at the new Amiga. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news. In the random access file this week, notebook-sized laptops were the rage at the fall Comdex show in Las Vegas. Texas Instruments was the latest to join the competition for the hot laptop market with its new TravelMate 3000. It features a 20 MHz 386 SX chip with a VGA display and built-in floppy and hard disk drives. It's priced at just under $6,000. Everex Systems rolled out its first ever portable, the Tempo LX, weighing in at just under 7 pounds. This sleek 386 SX machine has space for an internal modem and memory can be expanded from its standard 1 megabyte up to 5 megs. AST Computers unveiled two 386SX notebook-sized laptops. Both feature 20 MHz 386SX chips. The lower-end machine comes with a 20 megabyte hard drive and will retail for about $3,000. For another $500, you can get a 40 megabyte hard drive. Both AST models offer the unique ability to replace batteries in the suspend mode without disrupting your work. 
Canada's OG Bar also introduced its version of the laptop PC called the Internote. But unlike its American counterparts, this 286 import features a full-size PC board with standard key spacing. The Internote carries a price tag of just under $3,000. Company spokesmen say a 386 version of the laptop is in the works. A new add-in from Silicon Graphics will give PCs the power to manipulate 3D color images on the screen. Called Iris Vision, the product is a pair of circuit boards that plug into either AT-style or microchannel slots. Some of the superior graphic capabilities include a 24-bit Z buffer for hidden surface removal and double buffering for real-time animation. Iris Vision requires a 386 or 486 CPU. If you're a business executive, you can now brighten up your drab flip charts presentations by using the new Storyboard Live from IBM. The software allows DOS users to design graphics and charts and then animate the images on the computer. You can even add video and music to further jazz up your presentations. Next up, Paul Schindler and this week's software review. I just love doing this. But you know, it gets a little old and a little messy after a while. Well, there are lots of computerized calendar programs, but the best one we found for the Macintosh is Alarming Events. Now, when you bring up Alarming Events, you can determine how much of the year you want to see, and you can change that anytime you want. It tells you your next appointment at the top. The days when you have appointments are dark. There is a week at a glance available as well as a day at a glance. You can have a pop-up alarm as a flashing alarm across the top of the screen. You can time events for billing. You can keep to-do items which follow you forever. You can set recurring intervals and fix the day of the week or the number of days from the end of the month. No more pesky scheduling of weekday reminders. You can set alarming events to provide you advance notice before an appointment. You can indicate a duration to prevent scheduling conflicts. You can print it out a day, a week, or a month at a time, and you have a wide range of notification preferences, including sounds. Morning. Alarming Events is $130 from CE Software Incorporated of West Des Moines, Iowa. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. Apple is setting up a new toll-free customer support line to answer questions about its sales policies and programs. The number will offer customers a referral service, not technical support. The toll-free number is 800-776-2333. It's available weekdays, 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Taking a look at this week's top software titles for the Macintosh, Mac Connection reports that After Dark from Berkeley Systems is still in the number one slot. Sam is in second, followed by Adobe Type Manager and Quicken for the Mac. In fifth place this week is Disk Doubler from Salient. Rounding out the top ten titles are Fullwrite, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Mac Utility, in Pyro. And finally, one European computer company is putting its two cents in to protect the environment by packaging its diskettes in popcorn. Officials from Corbland International say they're switching to popcorn from polystyrene foam because popcorn is biodegradable. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Kate McGargy. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you it's a federal offense to copy software. The SBA provides information on how to stay software legal. Funding is also provided by PC Connection and Mac Connection, and by Byte Magazine and Bix. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $4 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.